I'm Joe Kennedy. For generations, American women have been making critical healthcare decisions for themselves and their families. As mothers, sisters, daughters, doctors, scientists, and advocates, women have been at the very forefront of our country's modern medical system. But beneath their work has long lay a fundamental inequity. For decades, the science that informs healthcare, from disease detection to treatment, has been skewed towards men, putting women's health at serious risk. More than 20 years ago, a small group of tenacious women and men set out to right this inequity and improve the health of women and their families across the country. One of the things that our committee looked at at that time was how women's health had been viewed in medicine and in research. Up to that point, it just appeared to me that women's health was almost an afterthought. I clearly recall a meeting uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, led by a very vocal woman who lived in Bethesda, Maryland, and at age 55, she had had a heart attack. And she said, this wasn't supposed to happen to me. I thought that heart disease was a man's disease. Rarely were things like heart disease or, or other issues mentioned. It was usually breast cancer or something reproductive that was thought about without a realization that we have health conditions that affect us, that also affect men, but that we need to know more about them from the standpoint of women. Are we the same or are we not? Sex differences means helping men also. As mother of three sons and a husband, I care about men's health. This is not just about women's health anymore. This is about understanding sex differences. It's important because if you think about the fact that there are these fundamental sex differences that go down to the cellular level, if we're not thinking about them at the very beginning, we may come up with the wrong intervention that's finally tested down the line. Despite the incredible advancements made by women over the course of the 20th century, they were not formally included in medical research, clinical studies, and drug trials until 1993. Making women's health care relevant was no small feat, and the men and women that fought for that equity faced an uphill battle. Well, women are very good at organizing. In fact, that's how they've gotten things passed. That's how they've gotten things done, is coming together and organizing. And so um, Barbara Mikulski, Olympia Snow, Pat Schroeder, and myself did get together. They were looking at the fact that women's health is something that wasn't being treated as an important enough subject. This was a major reason uh, why I think the Congress started to look at the issue differently. I had to testify before a Senate committee chaired by Senator Ted Kennedy. He actually had a hearing on the, on the Senate side looking at this new research on women's health and why it was important. And there was the opportunity my great uncle, Ted Kennedy, and his colleagues listened. They believed that federally funded studies should not be limited only to men. They fought hard to ensure that all genders and ethnicities were included in those trials, so that the benefits of those trials were not limited just to men. And in 1993, President Clinton signed the National Institutes of Health Revitalization Act. I'm particularly supportive of those provisions of S-1 aimed at improving the health of women and minorities. It's important that we ensure that resources are devoted to increasing our knowledge about conditions which uniquely affect these populations. It's equally important that we expand opportunities and support for the inclusion of women and minorities in research activities. I don't think they knew how profoundly this law would impact women's health. I don't think they knew that an entire field of women's health would be developed. There was sort of an awakening, and not only scientists, not only legislators, but women and men began to think, aha, maybe there's something to this. In the 20 years since the Revitalization Act was signed into law, research has yielded some startling discoveries about the relationship between healthcare and gender. For instance, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women in the United States. It presents differently depending on the gender something we've been able to translate directly into improved care. Lung cancer kills more women each year than breast cancer. Two-thirds of all people with multiple sclerosis are female, and autoimmune diseases like lupus are far more common in women than men. Great progress has been made, 
but much more needs to be done. I think we, we ought to recognize that we've had a lot of success, but there are still some tests that are not bringing women in sufficiently, and I worry about it. I truly believe that in order for us to move women's health forward, we're going to have to see advocates who are really focused on their specific disease areas really creating a common platform to advance all of women's health. I believe also the need for further accountability, um, scrutiny, close scrutiny of this research, particularly as you see gender differences. I think we can't lose sight of the importance of that. But as a society, I feel that we have an obligation to our mothers and to our daughters and our granddaughters to continue that story, to continue to the research so that as they grow, they will understand what makes them truly special, being a woman. These champions of women's health began a movement 20 years ago that led to dramatic change in how we incorporate gender into the study of health. But we know, through the work that they began, that there's much more to be done to make this kind of research the norm, rather than the exception. Leaders in government, science, and industry must recommit to ensuring equity and quality in biomedical science. At stake is the health of women, now and for generations to come. There is much more room for improvement and to continue uh, to educate uh, the research community, the, me the medical community, and the population at large. It's really incumbent upon every woman in America to talk to her friends, talk to her doctors, and talk to the policymakers and say, really, this has to end. We really want to finally know as much about women's health as we know about men's. How is that unfair? That just seems to me the very basic uh, bottom line of fairness.